Yes. So we start from scratch, yeah? Yeah. Uh, so again, <laughs> sorry. Uh, but uh, I'm going to introduce myself again, and uh, I'm uh, Dia Dean Rimawi, and uh, I'm a PhD student here in the University of Bolzano. I'm studying Advanced Systems Engineering, and uh, I am uh, grateful and uh, for to the community here to allow me to come and to uh, and continue my PhD studies. It's also something it means a lot for me. Uh, I'm being here in Bolzano since uh, two and a half years now, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I'm living here with my family. Hmm. Okay. Okay. You know, I didn't know that. Okay. My name is Ivo. And uh, thank you for having me in this conversation or for allowing me to have the conversation with you. I've been meeting you now three times, I think. Um, live and direct in the piazza when there was like a demonstration or manifestation in solidarity with Palestinian people with that's why I came in solidarity with you your family and friends and now obviously specifically the people in Gaza but not only and for me uh, the solidarity with Palestinian uh, with your people does not start on 7 October 2023 maybe I don't know if I ever told you but uh, before the corona time I was, uh, I was, um, I was, uh, there was a program for youth exchange. Mm -hmm. There was a program for youth exchange uh, in our province and some youngsters came from East Jerusalem and there were Palestinian kids and there were Jewish Israeli kids and there were some of our local kids, South Tyrolians, and I was accompanying them. Mm -hmm. And then I, I got my first personal contact with Palestinian kids, you know, and we got friends. But that was also not the starting point of my politicization, like, because I, I, I was reading and understanding about the oppression of your people years before. If I can just say there was one book that really also did something to my politicization when it came to the history and the reality of Palestine. And that book is called Israel's Sacred Terrorism. And it's a book written by Livia Rokach, or Rokash, I don't really know how to, how to call her name. And it's written based on the diaries of Moshe Sharet, the second Israeli prime minister. Mm -hmm. And one finds it online as a PDF for free. You can download it on the Google. And that book, like the, the diaries, was written in the 1950s. And the, he was the prime minister, Moshe Sharet. And he already opposed the brutality of the Zionist project. He already understood that the way that the Zionist project is working is a terrorist way. So... This book is written, uh, it's online as a PDF. We can later put the, the link. Mm -hmm. And I thank you very much for uh, giving me the chance to have a, a first dialogue with you. And for me, I really hope that some people of South Tyrol are also listening. Italian speakers, but spe specifically also the German speaking people like myself, because I see that a lot of people here in the South Tyrolean community, they are not informed, they are misinformed. There is a lot of mediatic gaslighting. So what we hear in the media is up to now really not portraying the reality on the ground. Mm -hmm. And I think that also in South Tyrol, a lot of people of good heart still want to wake up and see what's happening but up to now they really don't have the access which is something just to close it which is something that for me is very difficult to understand because from my side for the last six months every day i see what's happening and the horrors unfolding in gaza like in the life ticker like every moment and 
then it's like sometimes it's like this topic that I go out in the streets and I see people people that have. So sorry, I was already speaking a lot. So, Thank you. Sorry, no, I didn't video. hear the last thing. If you can, uh... I the last thing was saying that for me sometimes it's almost unbelievable that the people here, a lot of people up to now, are fully misinformed or uninformed. Yeah. When, in the real sense, we have, for the first time in the human history. We have an event like this one, sorry to say, but it's a genocide that is being that is being broadcasted in a live ticker. Like every second we see what's happening. And at the same time, a lot of people still don't see. Yeah. So it's really something incredible. Yeah, you know, like uh, the, the situation now is getting worse and worse every day. The, the killing is not stopping and uh, uh, now you, as you mentioned, it's a genocide. Also, South Africa and uh, uh, Ireland now joined, uh, has uh, took Israel to the International Court of Justice in order to uh, convict them of this genocidal acts that they are doing in Gaza, killing more than 32,000 civilians in Gaza. 13,000 of them are children more than 8500 are women so and and when we talk about children by the way the average uh, age of them it's just uh, 6 years 5 years uh, children we are not talking even about 16 17 children right so this is a really a tragedy and it's happening in front of all the world and as you mentioned maybe the people i don't know if this is the case or not but the people are trying to live within a bubble and they don't know, want to see outside of this bubble. They just care about themselves, uh, how they are living, their daily life is going and that's it. They don't care about what is really happening in the world. We now uh, start to care about stuff that it's maybe uh, second or third priority than the life itself but we i don't know exactly how to express even my feeling in regard to how how the how the world is now reacting and acting based on uh, what's happening and how it really should be we've been lectured about the uh, the moralities the ethics everything but now it is just it seems like it just was a, just an ink on the on a paper. It was nothing more, right? It's just something to lecture people on, but not to apply it. Or maybe it applies for some people, or uh, or the, and the other no. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I think maybe because you say maybe a lot of people really don't care. I really think sometimes I want to think on the level because you know i see that in the system that we are living here i'm talking about south tyrol i'm talking about europe i'm talking about the west i see the racism the structural racism is lying very open we can just look it's not that the people don't have a heart human beings we are human beings we have a heart but this the machine the system is so very racist we can just compare what ha happened in Ukraine and what happens now in this situation of, of war crimes that sum up to be a plain genocide. When the war in Ukraine started, people were mobilized. The system was mobilizing the hearts of the people, you know, like the media was every day, the media was, you know, was blowing into the heart of the people, you know, for the fire to burn, you know, being like, yeah, we have to show solidarity. We have to be open for the refugees. We have to, you know, we have to stand up for, for defense, not even for peace, you know, they were not talking of peace. Okay, yeah. they were saying peace, defense, you know, to send more weapons. Anyway, the human beings on the ground, they were mobilized. Also, you know, the system was, was like, 
waking them up. But now you see what happens is the total opposite is like really the total opposite. And I see that because like now I'm in the Facebook, you know, I'm an old person. I'm, I'm of that generation that is still hanging in Facebook. I look every day if they call me whether they are portraying something that happens in Gaza, in Palestine, they don't. They don't show anything, really, because you were mentioning the case in the International Court of Justice. There was the hearings, the 9th and the 10th of January, yeah. the hearings of the South Africans taking Israel to the court. Our local media, because I checked on the Facebook, I checked every all the platforms, you know, Stolite, Salto, name them. Nobody, nobody was reporting on the hearings. The 26th, the 26th of January, the International Court of Justice brought out the, how does one call it? Uh, the pre preliminary, the preliminary uh, uh, sentence where they say that it's very, that the, uh, the case is very plausible. They, get, they give uh, South Africa the right. They say it's very plausible that what is happening is a genocide. And yeah. Israel must stop the violence immediately. And they must take care of the refugees. Nobody in the local media was writing about it. Nobody was writing about it. There was nothing written. And... And still, we see that in the whole world, people are taking themselves to the streets. So, I mean, what I want to say is, I think we are still human beings. Many people have a heart, but yeah. there is a system of that is very racist, that is working against everyone. Because they want to close our hearts, you know, and our soul and our intelligence. That That's, I, I think I felt a little bit of uh, what you also uh, mentioned, like also the system is closing uh, about uh, this situation. Uh, even uh, within the university, we faced uh, two incidences, let's say. One of them was that we started a, uh, a petition uh, asking to the university to uh, cut uh, the con the collaboration with uh, the arms industry in general, specifically the ones that it has a relationship or co a cooperation with Israel, because as some reports uh, shows, and also the the petition itself, it was uh, supported by a lot of references that even the reader can go and check for himself. Uh, some of the reports are showing that the uh, the weapons and the arms sent to Israel, even within a collaboration or a research, is actually tested, being tested on the Palestinians themselves. So we 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 started this petition and we asked, uh, I think then was the uh, student representatives in order to share this petition to allow us to use their pr platform in order to broadcast. Uh, this petition to all the students, as it is the students' right, at least, to know about the petition. I'm not asking them to sign it, but at least to know about it. But for some reason, the student representatives has have uh, refused in order to share it, and we had to do it ourselves. And maybe we we had a, of course, as you mentioned, there are good people, good heart people that they are signed it we reached around 70 signatures there but eventually we did we we didn't reach to the amount that will be able to send it to the university council so the next thing that we did after that as we noticed that it, it's not working in this way right it, we are not we are going to the people but we don't we, we found that even when we go to the people the problem was is that they don't even have a clue about what is happening, right? So you, you, instead of like you are describing a petition about cutting the in the the uh, the arms industry and saying that these weapons are being tested on real human beings there uh, in Palestine, that you had to describe all over the history from the beginning, and uh, which is, was a, a lot of efforts. So we said, okay, we we can you know contact our 
the University Council itself on a different matter now, uh, knowing that Israel have been deliberately targeting the academics in Palestine, in Gaza. They're yes. destroying all schools, all universities. University. Professors <laughs> are being subjected. Archives. Uh, the archives, yes. The, exactly, everything, everything. So even even if you think about it, it's like uh, rebuilding the buildings themselves is easier than yes. rebuilding the education, the health system, all the other systems that we are talking about because it also needs a human, uh, some manpower in order to facilitate it. So uh, we noticed that the university in the war of uh, and the invasion of Russia on Ukraine, mm -hmm. the university has took a very uh, nice uh, and strong position condemning the war and condemning the the invasion on on Ukraine. And then we thought about okay, why why is not the case also for Palestinians? Because as they mentioned. They, they they mentioned that they are there because also the university is hosting a big international community of students and uh, professors as well. So it is that I think it also applies to the Palestinian situation, especially Gaza is now facing genocide and all this horrific situation there. So we sent them an email from only uh, Palestinian students. We we were. Uh, three Palestinian PhD Palestinian students and uh, we sent them uh, an email saying pointing this out and saying why not also condemning the situation now since you took a very strong and brave decision to support uh, Ukraine while it's being invaded by Russia why not also take the same position as uh, you did with the Palestinians being invaded by uh, Israel. Uh, and also we we had a suggestion, or you can say it's an initiative or a proposal for the university in order to help in the, uh, what do you say, like re, uh, the, the rebuilding and the, uh, not the rebuilding, the, like just the, what is coming after the war, after the war, how we can also contribute there in Gaza by mm. uh, maybe hosting uh, Gaza students here, uh, er yeah. Erasmus students, Scholarship. they can come here, scholarships. Yeah. If there is a possibility of for only one one scholarship, maybe for a, a person from Palestine or from Gaza to be dedicated uh, for them, or maybe even you know like even in the West Bank now. Uh, the universities in the West Bank has started gathering information about the students who are being affected by the war, who are being not able to continue their degree, their bachelor degree, their master degree in Gaza. Uh, and they started to, you know, collect this information in order for them after this war to start allowing these students to join to the universities of the West Bank. Even nowadays, we have the online learning, right? Yes. Which which can really help. So we had this uh, two, two parts of the city first to have maybe to host Gazans and Palestinians. And the second one is to, uh, you know, allow for resources access maybe in the future. To, uh, because the as I mentioned, it's online learning. You just can need to provide some resources for these students, like uh, attending some classes or do some exams with the yeah. university, as as uh, volunteering. I mean, like even if you ask for the PhD students, if you ask the professors themselves, I think you find a lot of them who are ready to volunteer sure. in order to for do sure. something like this, right? So we really urge the university to take this as a leading university towards something like this because now I think of course in the future we will see a lot of universities doing something like this I believe so because I believe that still the humanities is still okay uh, you you find humans right there are some people that will go to this initiative we're ready to volunteer to toward this but why not our university here in uh, Bolzano yeah. why not 
also taking this the leadership towards something like this this is totally human there is no uh, totally humanitarian i mean like it's uh, there is no but you know you know yeah i think this is the point where i also have to correct myself you know because i was before like i was trying to make that same point as you're making now you know saying that yeah we are they're still humans you know we are we are human beings we should feel yeah. one another yes we should have empathy and i was saying that there is a very big racist you know uh, racist sorry, double standards no, and you know sorry i think we had a small oh. problem i did i lost you after okay, no uh, we all humans yeah i'm saying we all want to believe in humanity yeah i think though we are at the, as we are at a time in history where we really see that some people really don't care and that the racism the systemic racism is so deep also in the human beings you know maybe before i was talking too good about the heart of humans because i mean we are at the point where we see that it's really you know we have to really check it again the the highest court of the world the international court of justice made it clear that here we are talking about genocide genocidal violence and our western governments and a lot our western governments are still supporting it or still not doing nothing against it not doing really something because it's also not enough to condemn you know we we must everybody has the chance to research because all the information is available all the information is there yeah. so i really wonder how can the media people you know like the journalists the people who make the information how can they still look themselves into the mirror you know how can they, how can they really i'm talking about this place here to keep the to keep the people so misinformed and because you say that hopefully tomorrow you know we'll have scholarships and we'll have programs at the moment sometimes i really think that europe i don't know where we are going in what direction we are going to really i really don't know i really don't know because especially with the case in the international court of justice if we don't wake up now and if we don't stand for humanity and if we don't even manage to say okay we have to stop this genocide if we don't manage to do that then where is our humanity so really there is a lot i think there is a, a breaking point for the whole world but specifically you know because as you stated before i think uh, here in europe we are talking about values we are talking about morality we are talking about the ethics you know we say it after the second world war after the second world war we say it that we are now somehow more mature we learned something we learned our we learned from our mistakes mm -hmm. but today is 2024 you know it's like almost 100 years later and we show that we have not learned from our mistakes yeah. so i mean this now i'm re i'm really calling on the on the single human being you know i'm on the single human being because i know that here in alto adige when the when the when the nazis came the germans when the germans came our local population the german speaking population like myself like the tyrolians there was very little resistance the resistance was very very small so now my question have we learned something you understand it's like it's 100 years later and we were we were always how does one call it we were priding ourselves with being there you know being enlightened you know being the ones who have learned from history yeah it seems like we so know, repeat really. history not learning from history yeah yeah that's that's uh, sad you know the, the sad thing as well is like also the the whole world is now living with the fact that there are more than 13000 children killed uh and buried alive under the rubble and it's okay right we we continue our life we celebrate 
uh, our holidays uh, as everything is nothing happened this is really really it's sad okay. yeah it is really sad but you know i mean there is a small group of people who are organizing resistance you know and i think i want to really give thanks to those people you know yeah. of course those left, those people on the left, sometimes they are called, I don't know, they are called the Antifa, the anarchists, whatever. They are the ones who are really doing it. Also in Alto Adige, the only ones, the only ones speaking up for humanity. There are really few. But for me, I'm really grateful for them. And I know they are being criminalized. I know that here also they are being criminalized. They are being put in the corner. They are being seen as if they were crazy. But they're really the only ones to organize the resistance. And now I know that in Bolzano, they made like almost 15 events. And everyone who wants to join them is welcome. One can come to the manifestations. Yeah. And I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The manifestations here, I, I mean, like, uh, uh, I remember when it, uh, when it all happens, I, we, we were talking. Me and uh, the Palestinian students here, we were talking about we should, you know, start to do something. We should, I actually urge, since we, we didn't see any activity uh, here in, in solidarity with the Palestinian people and what's happening. So maybe we need to initiate it ourselves, uh, ourselves. But uh, uh, when we sent the email, maybe we asked the wrong people, but we, we sent an email in order to ask to be able to do a manifestation and they didn't answer us uh, maybe because it was written in english that maybe it's our mistake but uh, uh, let's say then after one day or two days we received an invitation for the first manifestation that happens it started from via museo here in bolzano uh which we, we were really happy to see that there are some people really you know uh, considering uh, other people suffering and not only living within a safe environment and saying okay we since since we are good then the whole world is good we don't care about or we don't care about the, the other world. so it was really nice yeah as you mentioned uh, we are really thankful for all the people who is really taking the initiative in order to uh, organize these manifestations. I think there are, uh, as you mentioned, I don't know exactly the names. I'm not one of them and I'm not a local here. So I'm not also, the names are really hard for me in order to follow. But uh, yeah, uh, thanks from the, the bottom of our hearts. Yes, and you know, the last time in Bolzano, it was the first time that I also speak at the microphone. Yeah, because me too. I, <laughs> right. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. Because I think it's about time we have to speak up. You know, yeah. there is one, there is one uh, Afro-American activist, uh, fe a feminist uh, activist. She already passed away. The late uh, Audrey Lord. She has a saying: "Your silence will not protect you." Yeah. And really, I think now that we are living here in an environment where we, ha we have the chance to speak, we have the chance to, to act, to do something, to defend human rights. We have to do it, because if we don't do it today, tomorrow the chances are gone. I always live with that, with that truth. And the other thing, just to close, because now I'll be quiet. One thing that I always want to say, the local people like myself, the Tyrolians, the German speaking Tyrolians, I don't know how familiar you are with our history, but there is a part in our history, you know, you know, 1917, when the Belfort Declaration was written. Yeah. And the English, and the English say that, yeah, this piece of land, the Jewish people can take it for themselves and build Israel. You know that after the First World War, just one year after, 1918, 1919, our province got stuck and became part of Italy. So what happened is that our piece of land was given to the Italians as a war price, and they started to heavily 
like colonize colonize our province in a brutal way you know really with the with all the ways of colonization of you know, forbidding the language you know forbidding to teach german you know they wanted to destroy the culture fully and only because of international solidarity we were able to get our autonomy status that today gives us uh, guarantees us some liberties and some securities only because of international solidarity so i'm really i really want to call upon my people here you know the german speakers you know we have to remember our history we are the, we are the indigenous people of the land we should be the first ones to stand in solidarity with all the colonized indigenous people everywhere in the in the world but sadly very sadly i see that a lot of people here almost all of our dominant culture we choose the racism because we want to be white we want to pass as white western german and we don't understand our own history as indigenous people who were colonized you know and who were only freed by international solidarity but i think we could still make a change we could do it yeah hopefully without hope we cannot live right so hopefully something will happen in the future that it will bring goodness to all the world uh yeah i hope so uh when how are we gonna meet again we meet in the piazza or we should call the people to join or do we meet directly or we may make another zoom meeting how do we do it whatever you like uh, i am open to any suggestion i'm sorry i know that this should happen even before uh, a long time but uh, yeah it was really a very crazy period in the last uh, month let's say hopefully it will getting uh, better so yeah let's do it again we can have this nice talk again and uh, i hope that the, uh, as you mentioned like i see that the people or you can see all of us can open now the tv or the social media and we see the number of people goes into the uh, the, the people go into the manifestation or the manifestations around the world especially in the capitals of uh, all the countries and we can see that the majority of people are actually supporting this just cause of uh, Palestine and uh, but unfortunately the governments are being just uh, maybe puppets if it's <laughs> if it's correct or not but uh, following some uh, ideologies that comes from the USA and of course the USA is also controlled by the lobbies and we all know APEC and how it really controls uh, the USA uh, politicians and the political direction which also controls the whole world now, sadly. And with this uh, veto right that it's, I'm not sure if it's actually a good right to have, because now we can see how it's been misused twice, once with the Russian-Ukrainian uh, situation and with the, our situation in Palestine. It have been misused in order to ensure more people suffering day and day and day and day and the only people who is really losing are just the simple poor people who are being subjected to all this bombarding and uh, uh, it is indiscriminated even like it's like just bombarding without even thinking they have by the way like israel is one of the countries that they say that they are one of the leading countries in uh, technologies and information technology and uh, uh, the cyber part, AI, whatever you want to call it. But you can see it how it's like using these technologies in order to make sure that they make the mass damage 
that they uh, that they can do in order to fulfill of course their intentions in order to ethnically cleanse the Palestinians from their lands to get the land itself for themselves without really caring about the inter- the indigenous people of the land so uh, the, uh, so this is the situation uh, the technologies uh, and all the support that comes from the US is mi- being misused the uh, the the veto is mi- being misused everything is being misused we as uh, we already said these humanities the uh, ethics and moralities that we've been lectured about for all our life we can see it now uh, being uh, destroyed uh, in front of our eyes I don't think that if you ca- come to a child living in Gaza these days and ask him or her about what he feels about the these uh, about the humanity or about morality or about ethics, I don't think that he will answer you. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, we should really, uh, yeah, the world has learned from the situation after the World War Two. No, I don't think that will be his answer. Of course, it will be the total opposite. Uh, I hope that we get back to our uh, humanity again. Uh, I hope so. Sorry for the miss. We must, we must, we must. So I I, I just thank you for this first talk. I really appreciate. I really really appreciate this talk as well. I hope that we didn't try to speak uh, too much maybe or even less we i hope that we spoke the right amount of uh, yes. I, uh and I the people so. will really you know start to to rethink about the situations outside their own safe zone and uh, yes. to look on other people suffering people are being killed massively and we are just watching Right. Yes, I'm so sorry, and we we'll, we'll, we have to try to make a change. It cannot continue like this. So let's keep on trying. Let's keep on trying, and let's call yeah. other people to join in. We have to get creative. We have to try by any means possible, by any means necessary. Freedom for everyone. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ivo. Appreciate it. Hope to see you soon. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.